We've all been there. Doom scrolling on your phone for 10 minutes past your bedtime. And suddenly, it hits you like a, like a toy giraffe in the face. You haven't unloaded the washing machine. So how do we fix this problem? Let's make our dumb washing machine smart and give it a voice so it can tell us when it's finished its load. By voice, I mean, send us a text message, obviously. Not an actual voice, that would be cool, but rather useless. For this, you need a Zigbee door sensor, a Zigbee vibration sensor, and a Zigbee hub of some sort. I'm using a Raspberry Pi with a ZZH aerial attached. Place the vibration sensor on top of the washing machine, I put mine here, and then the door sensor somewhere sensible out of the way, mine is placed down here. You might have to experiment a bit to get it in the right place. So with the vibration sensor, on the washing machine it will detect when the washing machine vibrates thus telling us when the washing machine is on and being used you could use power i'm not sure like how much the washing machine is drawing and all that kind of stuff so safer vibration it works and then the door sensor to tell us when the door's been opened i.e it's been emptied unless you've just opened the door just to stop getting the messages so the basic structure of the code is once detect when the vibration sensor goes off Set of flags to say the washing machine is run. Send messages until the door is open. It's worked really well for me, so let's get to the coding. So I've added the vibration sensor and the door sensor to Zigbee to MQTT, as you can see here. And I've called the vibration sensor vibr slash washing machine and the door sensor door slash washing machine. I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. I think you can check one of my other videos. I've gone through that before. It's fairly straightforward. There's buttons on there. You just reset and then. Zigbee to NQTT picks it up and you give it a name. So these are the two names I've picked. So let's head over to the coding. Okay, so we're starting with a just blank um, Python script here. So like before in my other videos, we're just gonna import my own MQTT client. So like before, I'm gonna initial as you can check my other videos where I've done something very similar. Um, we're just going to initiate the client, client equals MQTT client, false for now, uh, let's make the client, and then we're going to subscribe. So now we need to subscribe to the topics that we set, so slash washing machine and vibra slash door no door slash washing machine so we're subscribing to those topics so now the script will get it's going to be listening for any messages sent by the from the vibration sensor or from the door sensor cool and then we need to we'll just make our on message function define on message and this takes client user data and message and what we'll do now we'll just say topic equals message dot topic and payload equals message dot payload and we're decoding that into utf-8 so again, this is sort of whistle stop tour. I've gone through this a bit more detail in my other videos. Um, and then the data, we're just going to do, oh, we to import JSON. Decode loads the payload. So what, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to print data and print topic the other way around. And then let's say client on message on message equals on message. Okay, so there we go. So we've subscribed to the topics, Ooh. the correct topics, and when any of them, when any of the messages fire from those on to those topics, we're going to catch with our on message function, and we're just going to print. The topic and the data just to see if this is working oh one thing i forgot uh let's add while true x equals one before it just gets it make sure it doesn't stop okay and then let's run it 
So I'm going to run it now. Washing machine control. There we go, it's running. I'm just going to shake the vibration sensor. It's got a green line on it. Nothing. Okay. Let's have a look. Ah. The um, topic has to have Zigbee to MQTT in front of it. You can change this in, in the settings, but I don't see why you would. Um, there we go, that should fix it, hopefully. Run it again. Shake this. There we go. So we're getting the back, we're getting the topic and we're getting the payload. And now I'm just going to put the magnet to the door sensor. And nothing's happening. Oh, there we go. Door contact true, contact false. Cool, so it's working. Okay, so now we have the data and the topic. So now we can start coding the logic. So I think first things first, what we'll do is we'll just say if topic equals this one. I guess I could make this a variable at the top, but whatever. Um, so let's start here. So if it's the topic machine is the washing machine, then we need a global function at the top saying washing machine run equals false. So this is just going to keep track of if we think washing machines run. Okay, but before we code this bit, let me just explain the logic a little bit. My vibration sensor is on the washing machine, which is near the sink. And I've found that like washing up, putting plates in the, on the dryer causes the vibration sensor to go off. We were only determining if the washing machine had gone off by one uh, sense of vibration, then we'd, I'd get tons of false readings um, and false alarms. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of how many we hear. And only when we've heard a certain number, I've played with this number and it's about like four or five, but you can play with it within a set amount of time then we know the washing machines happen. So if there's like one, if there's one and then like 10 minutes later, there's another, that shouldn't count. That's probably just someone doing the washing up, jumping up and down next to the washing machine. Um, but if we have multiple times coming through, then we know that that's more likely to be the washing machine. Okay. So the way we need this is we need to have a count that's going to count the number of fires we've had. And we need the last time it's fired which we need the date time for from date time. Import date time. Last time. And for now, this, this is just, we're just going to set this as now. But obviously that's going to change. Okay. So now we're going to say if the topic is the washing machine. So if that has fired now, this only fires if there is a vibration. So we don't need to check the payload at all. Um, we can just assume that if we've received something on that topic, that means it has, um, been vibrated. Okay. So if the time now is less than last time, Plus, okay, well, we need to import something else here, which will be time delta. Okay, so here, this is what I've worked out works for me. You might have to play around. So I'm saying if the time is less than the last time it ran plus 200 seconds, then we can increase the count. And then if not, we're going to reset the count. How should we put it back to one? We'll start one. Okay. So if the time now, if the last time it run plus 200 seconds is greater than the time now, increase the count. If it's not, we're just going to reset the count. Um, and then we can say if count is greater than five, washing machine run equals true 
Okay, so this is looking good. We can see we're resetting the count, we're counting it is, and if again this five, you all have to play with it. This is a number I've fiddled around with and work works for me. But what works for you works for you. Um okay, so let's run this and see if this works. And what we're just gonna do is we're gonna print here the count. I'm gonna print here. Washing machine has run. Okay, let's run it. So now I'm just going to shake the vibration sensor. Oh, oh, big errors. Ah, okay. What has that happened? Uh, local. Oh. So because this is a sort of quick and quick, quick and dirty script, um, I'm going to just use this. To bring those variables inside the function it's a bit horrible but what can you do uh so now we can let's clear that because that looks horrible let's run it again okay now i'm going to shake this there we go shake again three four five was five keep shaking it there we go washing machine is run cool and we'll check the um the reset but i'm just going to change that to 30 seconds just to make it a bit easier quicker so i'm going to get it up to three or something there we go wait for 30 seconds tell you a quick story a policeman came to the door today he was searching for a man with a hearing aid unclear why he was using a hearing aid not just binoculars Brumps. Okay, has that been 30 seconds? I probably should put a... Th okay, let me try. Shaking. Nothing's happening. Why did nothing happen? Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's print here. Count reset. Maybe that's what's gone wrong. And I'm just going to change this to like... Five seconds. So quickly shake it two three okay one two three four five shake it again count reset there we go and so now if i was to shake it again it's gonna be quite hard to oh it's just count resetting all the time why is that now ah tell you what we haven't done we didn't um we're not updating last time so we should do that now there's two options you can reset last time in every time you catch it or you can reset it when you reset it um i'm going to do it here this this will mean you basically have to increase your um what's that called uh threshold and also we need the global up here so let's try this again two three four five one two three four five okay i'm gonna shake it again can't reset now if i continue shaking it two i can't get it quick enough three Four. I'm just going to keep shaking it. These got to shake and stop. Okay, and now let's just double check that this is still working. So I'm just going to put this to 35. Two, three, four, five. Here we go. Okay, so here now we have. A way of knowing if the washing machine has run. So now we need to detect the door opening. So this is going to be used to know whether um, the washing machine has been emptied. I think I've done this, yeah, before in my door sensor thing. If data contact door is closed, okay? So 
what we shall do then is so that sorry that code was from another video which you can look into stepping into the future i think i called it um or i may have changed the title by now uh it's on how to use door sensors so if the, there there isn't contact oh don't need brackets in python <laughs> So if there isn't contact, so that means contact is now just open, the door has now opened, then we can set the washing machine run back to false. Cool, so that's going to reset it. Now, what we'll do is just print here, door open, so count reset. Now this is going to be a bit funny because I can just, oops, I can just do this anyway. So here's my door sensor, put the door to it, make it flash red, take it away, door's open, so can't reset. There we go. So the final thing, we're going to use a, a um, what do you call it, package, forgotten the name, one of those things that we import called app scheduler which i've just installed with pip here as you can see and what this will do is we you can call a function every whatever minutes so if we come back to here i'm just going to import this so that was from the docs and then we can go down here we need to make a function uh, washing machine check Global washing machine run. We can say if washing machine run, then send message. Now I use the Viber API to send a message to my phone. You could connect to various APIs to send emails. I'm going to leave that kind of up to you. Um, I might do a Viber run through because I find that's the, that was the easiest and quickest thing for me to implement. But so for now, I'm just going to print send message and then you do scheduler oh you need to initiate the scheduler at the top here scheduler, scheduler equals background scheduler and down here we can do scheduler dot add job right i've got the docs over here and you give your function cron and then we want to say right i i do minute equals 45 but that one we're not going to see so let's do seconds equals five and what i'm just going to do up here Send message, washing machine to empty. And just so we can see it running, I'm also just going to say else print message, no message to send. And that way we can just see it all going. So let's run that. That didn't work. I realized I was a complete numpty, not add Exeter, add job. Let's run that. Okay, I went a bit round the houses on this one, but you need to start the scheduler. That was fun finding that. Anyway, um, let's see it work. So now I'm just going to wait 15 seconds for it to tell me that the washing machine is not ready to run. The message to sent. Now I'm going to wiggle this. Two, three, four, five. Six more machine is run. So now it thinks the most machine is run. And the thing's going to check again in 15 seconds and send a message. Well, machine is empty. So what's nice about this is it's going to keep sending you a message until you open the door. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to change this to five seconds. 
run it again. Just get this to wiggle. No message to send from the washing machine. Okay, this washing machine is run. Send message washing machine to empty. Two, three, four, five. Send message. Okay, and now I'm just going to open the door. So now it's reset. And then we see no message to send. So there we have it. That's how to make your dumb washing machine smart. I hope you get to put this into practice. And oh, I got a message. Turns out I need to go empty the washing machine. <laughs>